move on to the next major theorem that we are going to prove in this course. This is the inverse function theorem. This is a very famous theorem and it is extremely useful in various parts of analysis as well as in differential geometry. Now the classical proofs of the inverse function theorem were quite involved and long but somewhat elementary. We are now going to use the full force of abstraction to give a very elegant proof of the inverse function theorem. The proof is still not easy but it becomes more transparent if we invoke these abstract machinery. To that end let us first prove a fixed point theorem called the Banach fixed point theorem. This theorem has other uses as well. You can prove the existence and uniqueness of solutions to ordinary differential equations using this theorem and it is used in several places in analysis and functional analysis. So this theorem is also known as the contraction mapping principle and you will know in a moment why it's called the contraction mapping principle. Let's state the theorem. Theorem. The setting is a complete metric space. So let x be a complete metric space and f from x to x be a contraction. This just means that there exists a constant c 0 less than c less than 1 such that d of f of x comma f of y is less than or equal to c times distance of x to y. So in some sense the map sort of contracts points x and y to points that are closer to each other and that is captured by saying that d f x f y is less than or equal to c d x y. This constant c is independent of the choice of points so that is to be remembered this constant c does not depend on the choice of points. The conclusion is then we can find we can find a unique point unique point x naught in x x naught in x such that f of x naught is equal to x naught. So there is a unique fixed point for the mapping f whenever the mapping f is a contraction. The completeness of the space is very crucial which it will become very clear in the methodology of proof why completeness is essential in this result. Let's prove this result. Proof. Proof. Fix x in x. Fix a point x in x. Now let's just see what happens to the point f composed with f of x. The distance from f applied to the point x twice in succession, let's see what happens to it. Well, by our hypothesis that this is a contraction, we know that this is going to be uh, less than or equal to c times d f x, f inverse x, but unfortunately f need not be invertible. So we cannot apply such an argument. But what we can do is try to get the required term that we need. So write this as d f composed with f x comma f x plus d f x comma x. So the reason why I did this is because I need this term to use the hypothesis that f is a contraction. I cannot write uh, this in terms of f inverse of x simply because f, f need not be an invertible map. But now that we have this, we can write the first term, the first term simplifies, this is less than or equal to c times d f of x comma x plus the same thing again d f of x comma x. So the net upshot is this is equal to c plus 1 times d f of x comma x. Okay, So this is the conclusion at the first stage when you apply f to the point x twice in succession 
we get a nice inequality df composed with fx comma x is less than or equal to c plus 1 times df of x comma x. Now consider the iteration f uh, iterated n times which is just f composed with f composed with f n times ok or if you want a recursive definition fn is just f composed with fn minus 1. Consider the iterates of f and let us look at what happens to the point x d f n x comma x. Now, you can apply a similar sort of argument that we have already done and by induction you can conclude that this is less than or equal to c n minus 1 plus c n minus 2 plus dot 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 plus c plus 1 times d f of x comma x. So, the exact same argument that we applied for the first case for f 2 if you apply induction you will immediately get this ok. Now, note that note that 0 is less than c is less than 1 and from this it follows from this it follows that this series 1 plus c plus c squared plus dot 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 c n minus 1 this is a geometric series this is a geometric series geometric series and this will converge to a quantity uh, when you take limit n going to infinity this will just converge to 1 by 1 minus c ok. It is a convergent geometric series ok. What does this show? This shows that d f n x comma x is less than or equal to some constant I do not know what that is there is 1 by 1 minus c k d f x comma x ok and uh, for a fixed x for a fixed x this d f x x is also some constant this is also some constant net upshot is this f n x is a bounded sequence it is a bounded sequence ok. Now, uh, because f n x is a bounded sequence uh, we can try to show that it converges, but we are in an arbitrary metric space. So, we have to be a bit more delicate. So, we apply induction again applying induction again induction again for a fixed for a fixed for a fixed n in n and for each for each m in n we have we have d f n x comma f n plus m x f n plus m x is less than or equal to c power n d f m x comma x ok. So, this prove please uh, take your time and prove this by induction it is very easy and it follows along the same lines of what we have been doing so far ok. Now, let m be the supremum be the supremum of the quantities d f k x comma x as k runs through the natural numbers ok. Fix epsilon greater than 0 fix epsilon greater than 0. So, if n if n uh, is suitably large suitably large large so that so that so that this c par n is less than epsilon by this supremum which we called m ok. So, uh, rather than saying if n choose n suitably small will be a better phrasing. 
choose an choose an suitably large so that c par n is less than epsilon by m okay so what we can conclude from this is uh, this sequence this sequence sequence fnx is cauchy is cauchy okay so let x not x not be the limit of this sequence this is the crucial point at which we actually require the completeness of the space so far in this proof the completeness of the space was completely not needed okay we are going to now show that this point is the required is the required uh, fixed point okay now to see this just observe that d of f of x naught comma x naught is less than or equal to d of f of x naught comma fn of x plus d of uh, x naught comma fn of x okay and this is less than or equal to c times d of x naught comma f n minus 1 of x plus d of x naught comma f n of x okay now uh, because f n x converges to x naught the r h s r h s can be made small can be made small if n is very large in if n is very large in other words d f x naught x naught is just zero okay which just means f of x naught is equal to x naught so we have found the required fixed point now if if f of x naught equal to x naught and f of y naught is equal to y naught then d of f of x naught comma f of y naught is less than or equal to c times d of x naught y naught and because c is less than 1 that is simply not possible this is not possible unless unless x naught is equal to y naught okay so this shows that uh, there can be at the max one fixed point we have shown that for a contraction there can be at the max one fixed point here completeness nothing is used whenever you have a contraction there can be at most one fixed point so this concludes the proof of the banach fixed point theorem we will soon see how to prove the inverse function theorem using the banach fixed point theorem in the next sec video i'm going to motivate the proof of the inverse function theorem by using another theorem that is often used as a substitute for the banach fixed point theorem newton's method this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the video on the banach fixed point theorem